For those of you who often attend our monthly meetings, you should be well aware by now that I frequently leverage the deep talent pool of our sister club, the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club. And tonight is just one more chapter in that ongoing story as we hear from Scott Pavel, resident belief expert in that fine organization. For the pot hunter, and if you're listening to, my, to me now, you're a pot hunter, elites are simply one of the best and safest ways to fill one's basket and also one's larder because they usually dry wonderfully. But field craft can be difficult because the diagnostics are subtle. Tonight's speaker though, he's done the homework for you and generously placed that information in a free resource on his club site called the Belit Filter. I'll put that link in the chat in a second. The Belit Filter is a tool to help you identify what's in your basket, its edibility, and if so, its quality. What more can there be? Many thanks to Scott for the hours, substantial hours you surely expended creating this resource, and many thanks for joining us tonight. We're very glad to have you with us to teach us a little bit about this difficult to ID family of fungi. Hi everybody, my name's Scott Pavel and I am a Bolete Obsessive. Um, there's a lot of people listening here who are much better identifiers than I am at fungi in general. Um, I'm a, a true focused obsessive, uh, mostly because I got embarrassed at one point in time and I decided I had to do something about it. Um, this is, for anyone who's wondering, this is the, the book to get right now. Uh, there is an earlier version that Bissette, Rudy and Bissette did on North American bullies, covers the greater area. This is a newer book with more information. The bullet filter is not an identifier, it's a key. Anyone who's tried to use these books will realize the photos are great, the information is fabulous, that using the key in the front is frustrating at best. Um, what I did was create an electronic key, like when you're shopping, you say, well, I wanna look at shirts that are blue with long sleeves and snaps. Well, you can, the a normal um, dichotomous key would require you to do that in order. Shirt, blue, uh, long sleeve snaps. A synoptic key lets you go in any order. You say, well, I wanna look at shirts, at snaps, and Matt, by the way, shirts that uh, have long sleeves and are blue. This is taken from the Facebook Belize page. Um, a friend of mine named Rog Robert Gergulich put this together. Save this. This is the thing you want if you want to start identifying bullies. The frustrating things about this group is that, um, as, uh, as was said, they're subtle. Bill Yule up in Connecticut likes to say that bullies are like card players. They have tells, but you got to learn the tells for each one. These are where you find the, the tells. If you look, the cap can be any number of different colors. It can be cracked, it can be not. Most uh, dichotomous keys will start here with the, uh, the stipe, the stem, and the different features that are on that. Uh, what the flesh does as it goes, the outside, the inside, um, down here, what the pores do when they're blue and when they're not. This, and this one here, this is a pretty good example of what a tell is. When you scratch, this, this is a regular old red and yellow bully. It kind of drives everybody crazy because there's a hundred of them. Well, actually, I think there's 50 of them and they're really subtle. Well, this one, if you scratch the pores, they turn blue. And if you wait 15 minutes, they turn this really pretty brown that's down here. This is Lanmaua pseudosensibilis. The blue happens, even though that's kind of an odd greenish blue, but that really pretty brown after about 10, 15 minutes is unique to this species pretty much. It's a tell. Once you know it, you go, aha, gotcha. Good edible. It's nice to know. The habitat matters a lot. I Almost every bully uh, is, I, oh God, 
grows in association with trees. And uh, most of them grow with one tree or another tree. Um, a lot of them grow with just conifers or just hardwoods. So that's important to, to note. And they're also regional. But this is the most important page you can find. Now, why bullies? OK. This is a, uh, from the Belief Filter, which you can find uh, at the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club. This is every mushroom in the southeast of the country. You guys, alas, are kind of right on the borderline between the northeast and the south, because I'd use arbitrary um, dividing lines by state, but call it the south. If you look, there are seven, all of seven species to avoid, the ones that are known to be sick makers. There's 15 that are bitter. There's 94 that are good. 65 that are iffy. Most of those are good too. I just can't say so in public. Um, and 11 that are great. Um, so if, if you do the numbers, 12 out of 190 are ones you want to avoid. That's why bull eats are ones to hunt every time. Now, what to avoid? This is everything. Learn these, please. All those prophylactic, oh, avoid red pores that stain blue and all that nonsense, throw that out the window, okay? It's pre-DNA. It doesn't apply, it's not true. Learn the ones that, that have issues. Um, Boletus miniato olivaceus, we're not even sure if that has issues. It has an old reputation. Um, same with rubro flammeus, we're not sure about that one. These two here, the, the two rubro boletus, those are, the, are two to really avoid because that's the bad boy genus. One thing we learned from DNA, let me get down here. This is a real bad boy. This is, uh, on this continent, you find all the really bad bullets on the West Coast. This is one of them. This is uh, Rubro boletus East Woody Eye. There have been exactly two recorded deaths in all of history as a result of bullets, and they came from this mushroom because it's a vomiter. And somebody burst his stomach from vomiting so hard um, over a period of two days that he actually died. Um, there's a chemical in this one genus, Rubro boletus, called uh, boleta satin. Not sure exactly how to pronounce it. Um, that was identified in Satan's bully, the close relative of this out in Europe. It's presumed to exist in the rubro boletus group. So in California, it matters. Out here on the East Coast, we really don't have them. We don't have any of these super dangerous sickeners. We have some that'll give you a bad couple of nights. You won't be happy, but nothing like, like this. Um, that rule about blue, red pores that stain blue came from this mushroom or its European counterpart. Because if you look at it as red pores and it stains blue, those red pores are not connected to edibility. There's a, for those who are a little more advanced, there's a fascinating article out there on, um, on the chemical pathways between that cause these things to turn red or blue. The red comes from the oxidation, oxidation of certain organic acids. Um, variegatic acid is the most common, but there's other ones. If you leave them exposed to air over time, they'll turn red. All these red bullies that you see, it's oxidation of organic acids on their surface that have been exposed to air. That's where the red comes from. There's hundreds and hundreds of them that have, uh, are perfectly good edibles and are red. The acid has nothing to do with it. They turn blue because there's enzymes inside the cells of, uh, of a lot of the bullies that buffer that reaction. So if you break the cells and expose the acids to the air along with the enzyme, you get blue instead of red. 
hundreds and hundreds of bullies that have blue staining reactions. It has nothing to do with that ability. What has to do with that ability is rubroboletics. That's what you watch out for. Now you guys, if you look here, have two of them. These are marked as a void. Uh, Dupanii is actually a European species. People found two examples in the US. No one knows why. Um, if you find one, report it because it's a huge big deal for science. Rhodosanguineus is a rare mushroom. I get it up here. I think it reaches down to, uh, to DC uh, and it smells weird. Nobody would want to eat it anyway, but don't try. <laughs> it's a rubroboletus. Don't bother with that. Um, the other two to watch out for are these on the bottom, Sutorius eximius and Tylopos griseocarneus. Those are just known sick makers. A lot of people eat them and enjoy them. They both used to be called edible in the guidebooks, um, but enough people have gotten sick that you know, we say just avoid it. Learn the bad boys, simple enough. These are the ones that you're gonna worry about more. These are the bitter bullies. Um, if you're really new and you have a really evil sense of humor, these are the ones that you use for a prank. Here, taste this. Har, 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 har. Um, when I say they're bitter, I mean they are crazy bitter. Um, you remember in high school, they would hand out those little slips of paper, and you know, three quarters of the class would flinch in horror, and the other quarter of the class would go, what do you mean? I believe that may have been this chemical. Um, certainly we get those numbers are about the same. 20% of the population just doesn't get it. I only taste it a little bit. The people who are sensitive to it will, and I'm not kidding, flinch in horror at the flavor. One bitter bully will ruin a pot roast. And I mean a whole big six, eight pound pot roast shot, gone. So these are the ones you want to learn. It's a harmless chemical. The people who don't taste bitter love these. They taste mushroomy apparently. They don't have any problems with them. Uh, none of these are known to be sick makers as well as bitter. But if you're at all sensitive to bitter, uh, you'll find out the hard way. Now, why does it matter so much? Here, identifiers are gonna have fun with this. See, there's two different mushrooms here. Right now, one of these will make you flinch in horror if you are capable of eating of tasting bitter, uh, and the other one is a king bully that grows in the area under Norway spruce. Which is which? I can tell you the one on the left with the yellow cap. That cap can be just as brown as the one on the right. The one on the right can have a yellow cap, particularly when it gets older. The darn clues are subtle. The answer is the one on the left is Chippewansis. It's a King Boli, choice edible. You find that you jump up and down and scream for joy. The one on the right is Tylopolis Phellius, also known as the great betrayer or Euro Europeans bane. Um, my wife's family is Czech. There are no more mushroom crazed people in the world than Czechs. And they come out here to visit and they find these big, beautiful, unblemished bullies. And we just have to shake our head and tell them, okay, go ahead and taste it. <laughs> There's one bitter bully in Europe. I think it is Phellius, but it doesn't look quite, uh, quite the same. Every other bully they have, except for the Satan bully, it's a good. We are full of these bitter bullies in the US. Um, and in both of our areas, Western Pennsylvania and uh, the Mid-Atlantic. So these are the ones that you wanna watch out for. Look for dark netting. You see the dark brown netting there? That's a sign of a Tylopolis. Um, they often have a, a bulbous stem. You can see like down here, Rubra bruneus. These are typical shapes. They're big, charismatic, Beautiful mushrooms, white on the inside. They get pink pores when they're old. That's a, a big tell. Um, the king bullies, the true bolitus edulis 
ones, they have buff white pores that age yellow as they get older. Uh, Tylophilus have buff white pores that age pink. So look for an older one. And if they start turning pink, you can see. Now there's a lot of Tylophilus that are perfectly good edibles. Um, taste them, taste them for bitter. If you don't taste bitter, get a friend to taste it, give them fair warning, and then get a friend to taste it. And if it's still not bitter, it's probably good. A lot of really good Tylophilus edibles. Okay. I promised to go down some specific tells that you guys might want to know. So let me go over here. This is a great tell. See the white netting here? You see white netting on anything but a baby, jump up and down for joy because that's a king bully. This one grows under oak. Most of them grow under conifers. Um, there are some other tells for them, uh, stuffed pores on the young ones. As I said, this will grow into a big, beautiful mushroom. Uh, those buff white pores on the inside will age and turn sort of yellowish. You're great. This is another one of the bitter bullets. See the color, that purple that doesn't exist in nature? It exists in Tylopolis. That's a good warning thing. If you see big purple, beautiful bully like this, shake your head and taste it. Um, they make wonderful culinary bitters. There's someone more or less in your area um, who I'm an internet friend, I'm blanking on his name, who makes culinary bitters. They're, they're great. He sent me some of them. Uh, he has one made out of plumbio violations, this one. I highly recommend it if you're that good a cook and that experienced. Um, but there we go. Okay, so we have Edulis and Tylopolis. This one is easy. This is Old Man in the Woods. I expect most of you know this. Um, old Man, he turns pink on the inside and has that shaggy black and white cap. There's two different Strobilomyces, that's the genus, two different. Um, species. We used to think we could tell them apart, but we can't. DNA proved that what we thought were the differences between them don't work. It doesn't matter. They're both good edibles. Um, I don't like them when they're fresh. They turn kind of slimy when you cook them, uh, and they turn your pot black. They're both really good when they're dried. Um, speaking of which, I should mention, the Czechs have a word for this, uh, this phenomenon. It's called babki. Everyone knows Baba is grandma. My old Baba, uh, you ask her for advice. Well, babki refers to the mushrooms that quote, the connoisseurs turn their nose up at, like Swillis, because they're just not good enough. And babki are all those hundreds and hundreds of bolis that frugal grandmothers would collect by the bushel and dry out and use them to feed their families over the winter. Uh, Suwila species, I don't think I have a picture of them. Suwilas are notoriously slimy. Um, I don't like them when they're fresh. The sliminess will actually, even when it's cooked, it's still slimy, it's like okra. And it triggers my gag reflex, personally. Dried, I adore them. You put them in a soup, you put them in a stew, you put them in a sauce, they're, like button mushrooms on steroids for flavor. They're fabulous. That's what bobkey are. Old Man of the Woods is a bobkey. The, uh, the stem, you may wanna, they get tough and fibrous, particularly when they're old. So for this one, I pluck the stem off. Some people say they wanna get rid of the pores. I don't care about that. If I'm drying it, it's just flavor. Here's one that you'll see on the front of mushroom guides. Don't eat a mushroom that has red pores and stains blue, okay? Doesn't get any redder than Butyria boletus frostii. Uh, it, it even has these wonderful little, you know, exuding droplets on the bottom that look like some kind of alien creature from outer space. The pores stain blue instantly. The flesh stains blue. The darn thing is delicious. 
they sell them in Mexico. Uh, the name translates to sour bellies. They have a viscid cap that is very sour. Now, a lot of my, what my advice for this one is a lot of people love them and a lot of people dislike them because that flavor is, is unique. And a lot of people find it off-putting. I'm told that some people get GI distress. It's not clear whether that's more than average for you know, your average wild mushroom. I've eaten literally hundreds of them and I like them. Uh, they're easy to identify. Uh, uh, we call them candy apple bullies around my neck of the woods. And you can see why. They're brilliant red. We, even when they get old, they turn to like um, Spanish leather red. They have these raised reticulations, the netting, mm -hmm. let me focus in here. It's actually raised up like ridges. The stem can be bright red like this or red and yellow, um, but they're delicious. They're a fun find. And they put the lie to that whole myth about red floors and standing blue. This is one that uh, I hope the identifiers are having fun with this one because you should be able to tell this one. It has a tell. This is one of those mushrooms that Bill Yule was talking about. It's a pain in the you know what to identify if you don't know its tell. It's brown, it's kind of whitish yellow, has a plain white stem. It doesn't, you know, the, the flesh is white and it doesn't move. But you see right here, this is its tell. That odd gray green bruising on the pores. It's the only mushroom there is that has that color and this general look. It's, this is Imleria pallida. Grows with oaks. It's delicious. It's even better dried. Uh, if you find it, it it's, I think I have it marked as good on the bully filter. Personally, my wife thinks they're choice. Um, but this is why we had to write the bully filter up because these will drive you bananas if you don't have a look at this. What the bully filter does is just narrow things down. It's a key. It's meant to get you down to five or six. And then you look them up in the books. This one has two tells. First, it is the pores. See that brilliant sunny yellow? A lot of bullies that are yellow. There's only one genus that has this, this kind of glorious yellow, and that's Oreoboletus. This one, Oreoboletus inixus, has an odor to it. It's unmistakable. Um, some people say it smells like witch hazel. I say it smells vaguely chemical. All I can tell you is when you find it, smell it and you'll go, what the heck? And it will stick in your memory forever. It kind of climbs into the back of your head and goes, I'm mushroom, but I'm wrong. Perfectly good edible. Um, I can't pick them because the smell is so strong it gives my wife a migraine. Um, if I carry them in the car and drive with her the next day, she'll get a headache. So I avoid them for that reason, but they dry out, they're delicious. Uh, and they're a lot of fun because that smell, like I said, is unmistakable. And when you show it to people, they'll remember it forever. Next time you're out on a foray. Which hazel or like chemicals? Oh, okay, okay. Something like, I don't actually know what witch hazel smells like. Uh, Arlene Bissett uses that as her comparison. Um, but it's a unique smell is really what it comes down to. Once you know it, you will know it. Um, and if you sniff these bullets, you, I mean, you're going to taste them for bitterness. You're going to taste them for, for sour. I mean, look at what we've gone through the senses here. Bitter, make sure you taste it. Bitterness will tell you. Make sure you taste it. Sour, sourness will tell you. Make sure you smell it. Unique smell, that will tell you. You don't know what your tells are going to be on these different bullies. Um, you just learn them 
bit by bit, learn the bad ones and then uh, go through, narrow them down and figure them out. Here's another one with a fun tell. This is Reddy Bolitas Grisius, has two tells again. You guys probably know Ornotypes or Ornatopes down in your neck of the woods, bright yellow. It has this huge netting on the stem. Very common mushroom down in the mid Atlantic. Um, not very good edible, but oh well. Grisius is a better edible, same genus, has that same big, bold netting. But down here, this is the secret tell that makes this one so fun. They're often buggy, and when they're damaged in the stem, for some reason, they bruise yellow. It's a, a unique tell, but you, know, you cut it open, you look inside, bang, there it is. You know what it is. There's no question about it. That's why we go through all these different features. We were looking at, oh, okay, this is Tylopus. The pores uh, turn brown when scratched. We have a lot of netting. The only question is, which Tylopolis is it? Um, and it takes practice to get down and, and know that's Vario Bruneus. Bruise blue on the inside, bruise yellow on the inside, and so forth. What else do we have here? Some fun ones. Oh, here's a, a really fun tell. This is a mushroom that drives everybody crazy until they, again, until they know what it is. The identifiers have already said, I know that one. This is uh, Gyrophorus castaneus. Um, I know they changed the species name. Castaneus is a European name. We keep losing our best names to, to Europe. It's the genus that has the tell. Look carefully and you'll see the stem is hollow. There's your tell. This looks like a regular old brown on brown mushroom. If you squeeze it, it's hollow on the inside, kind of filled with cotton. That tells you the genus from there you can go. Um, and then I'll, I'll end with two, red pores that stain blue. How much time do we have? I want to leave time for questions. I'd like you to start wrapping it up if you're going to take a couple questions because um, we yeah. need to finish uh, both that, this and the mushroom okay. table by eight o'clock. So it's you have 20 about five more minutes. Okay, I'll wrap it up with this one. Uh, these are very common mushrooms in the Northeast. I think they're pretty common down the mid-Atlantic too. I have a friend in New Jersey, I was saying, who has done an unpublished study on these. So I have inside information to share. There are six different species of these red mouths. They're, um, they're very plastic. He likes to joke around and call them chameleonensis and variableness and so forth. Um, they're all in uh, the genus Neoboletus. I believe they're pretty much all good edibles too. Um, the one that grows, that looks like this and grows under conifers is Boletus or Neoboletus subvolutipes. Um, this one, we don't know what the actual name is. It's Probably in the books is Subleridellus, but we haven't gotten the original Smith and Thiers holotypes DNA tested, so we can't say that for sure. Uh, if you find them, these are not toxic. Okay, these are, are what they call in Europe scarlatinas. Uh, they're very good edible. Um, they bruise like crazy blue on the inside, they dry out to be sort of off-white. The flesh is actually yellow. Um, and you can see, you know, how they work. The plain yellow stipes, um, bright red pores, they're orange when they get old because the pores open up and that red is only on the tips. If you look, pointing won't help. If you look at the tubes, you can see that the tubes are actually yellow. The pores are the end of the tubes. Those turn red because they're exposed to oxygen and you get that oxidizing reaction 
that we were talking about before. The blue, as I said, is coming because there's an enzyme in the cells, mixes with those organic acids and is, becomes blue instead of red. Um, I recommend these. Gary Linkoff, in the two years before he died, used to tell me that this was his new favorite edible, was this oak-loving red mouth. So in his name, I will leave you with that and I guess turn around to take questions. Scott, could you, um, since you're leaving us with such a strong recommendation on this one, could you go back to the picture of the poisonous red poured mushrooms and, and like specify okay. how to tell them apart? Well, first, we're not in California. Fair. Okay. <laughs> um, these grow until the Rocky Mountains. Um, you can find them in the mountain states. I guess you could, if I was in Idaho, I might worry, but they're just not found out here. Um, so, it, you know, we're not worried. They're all like this. They're huge, big, bulbous mushroom. They usually have red netting on them. Um, let me go find the, these here. Rotosanguineus. In fact, I can call up the bolete filter if we want to do that. Let's see. Assuming I can learn to type. Okay. So we're now on the Western Pennsylvania site, the Bolete filter. Roto S. Roto sanguineus. We can go through, find ourselves a good photo. And I'll blow it up. Uh, I'm wrong on that one. Oh, there's a good one. Okay. This is the, the rubro boletus that you're likely is to find around us. Red, red pores, stains blue, red netting on it. Uh, it has a very odd perfumey smell to it. I'm told it tastes fruity. Uh, it has a you know sort of typical bulbous shape, a little more slender than the ones out in the West Coast. Uh, if you see it, look for it and find out. It's it doesn't look. I, mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like the oak loving red mouth, mm -hmm. right? They're just not the same. If you're new, you're new. I mean, everyone knows, knows that the three dangerous G's of mushroom collecting are ignorance, arrogance, and greed, right? Those are the, they're all curable, but those are the three to worry about. When you're new, you're ignorant. And if you don't know the difference between looking for you know, something with a, with red netting on it, that's red and yellow, and seeing a bright yellow stipe. Okay, red pour stains blue. I'll be a little more careful. Um, I didn't mean to, to go over the top with that. The rubroboletes are red poured and they do stain blue. It's not a bad cautionary warning if you are new. It's just... Um, I get told all the time, red pores stays blue, it's poisonous. So I'm, uh, I'm trained. <laughs> I have a bad reaction to it. John Harper, our culinary chair, is asking if there are any strategies for removing bitterness from boletes. I know in Eastern Europe, they do it with some of the bad tasting russulas, but I haven't heard it for boletes. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, oh, well. <laughs> like I said, uh, I, you got to understand, it's incredibly bitter. <laughs> I mean, people who, 
who who tasted these, um, it, it really is a nasty prank to pull on your friends because they're, you know, can't get it out of my mouth for for days. Well, not days. For for ten minutes, I have the echo of the bitterness coming through. Yeah. Um, give it up. It's bitter. Make culinary bitters out of it, or leave them. That's what we do. We just look at them with regret and say, "Oh, you're so beautiful, you bastard." So I, I think we better ought to wrap it up there. We're running towards the end of the first hour, and um, I guess I will ever have to remember uh, ignorant, arrogant, and greedy. I, <laughs> I think it applies to many more things than mushrooms, uh, and probably life in general could be characterized according to those uh, parameters. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, Scott. I've learned certainly that my old adage of if it stains blue, uh, has a red for surface or tastes bitter, there are other rules out there that have made almost everything I know about mushrooms change over the last five to 10 years. So nothing new there.